Hi guys and welcome to a new edition of Art Life with Jonah Bogdan. We are about to start an exhibition and... Yeah, Bogdan has, uh, has gotten the opportunity to do a solo exhibition and I work on the exhibition committee at Silver Street Studios so I do a lot with larger groups and things like that but it, it really is a different experience when you're doing a solo show. This would be, would be our third, third exhibition we organizing yeah. the between of us and um, either if you are an artist out there watching this vlog or if you are purely a collector that enjoy art, we want to you know, share with you um, the steps we took to organize those exhibitions. And it, it didn't happen overnight. We learn from others. We learn from our own experiences. And um, shall we start the show? Absolutely. If you like what you see today, please consider giving us a thumbs up. Be sure to hit that subscription button if you haven't already and that notification bell. And that lets you know when we have more videos. Hi, I'm John, and this is Bogdan. Join us on our journey as we figure out how to earn a living as artists, introduce you to those we meet, and share what we learn along the way. Hey guys, listen, I want to start off this conversation with a disclaimer. Everything that we're saying today is our experience, what we've been through, what we would suggest, and it would depend completely on how much money you've got, what kind of place you can secure, how much time you have, uh, and just kind of the nature, the vibe of what you want to create. Do what you want to do. No one's telling you that this is the right answer. And, it's just our answer. And you know, if, if this is... Uh, um helpful uh, for you just join down anything that is mm -hmm. important and um, apply it to your uh, experience I mean you can you can make changes all the time um, and I did look out there on, on uh, YouTube there's lots of other videos so you can get lots of other perspectives on this but it's really very very frightening when you're doing your solo show particularly for your first one it can be very very daunting but overall these are kind of the steps you need to think about it when you organize your exhibition. We are uh, independent artists. Mm -hmm. We don't have a gallery behind us to help right. us with the contacts and newsletters and uh, invitations. So we and have to yeah. we have to to think of everything. I mean, it's a business. It needs a hustle. You have to do it. Absolutely. So I guess the first thing is, you know, there's a lot you have to do before you get started, the getting ready stage. And you have to have a collection of work. So uh, the collection, this is how it's working. Uh, some artists have large pieces in a collection, some very small. Um, in my uh, photography world, I have been, you know, taught that you should have at least nine pieces before you think yeah. of a show. Uh, it happened that I have 15 pieces in the show, but uh, this is it's very important that you have a story uh, and you, the way you put it together it has to have a continuous continu continuity continuity uh, on whatever you put up on that particular exhibition i have seen some people do solo shows where they're really just cleaning out their studio and just kind of placing what they've got and what they want to get rid of uh, and they might group it together lovely in, in arranging it, Nothing but there's really it. Yeah. no story. Mm -hmm. It's just like going through a shop. It, it, yeah, it's, it's very random and then, you know, um, in photography, and it applies to, to paintings as well, it's important that you kind of frame them uniformly oh, yeah. so that so they have a look they all fit into a story and to a space uh, without one to have a golden frame and the other one a silver frame and the other one a black one because you don't know how to focus and it's very important. Yeah, you know, unless that's your vibe. I mean, if yeah. you want to, if that's part of your kind of message, but you've got to think of how you're going to display it. That's really important uh, because if you go to a venue that has only uh, concrete walls, you can't hang, mm. you can't put nails. So you, you're going to have to be able to think of how, how you're going to display all of this uh, and, and, and tell your story. Uh, I think also 
really, really important, really, really early, uh, is to make sure you've got a good list. Your mailing list is the most important thing you've got. Uh, your collectors, prospective collectors, friends, colleagues, uh, uh, what I think a lot of times I see people do with, with solo exhibitions is they end up just inviting their artist friends, which is great, but your artist friends aren't going to buy anything. So if you're really looking to sell, you need to invite pe other people as well. What I experienced this time with me, I, my solo, first solo, solo exhibition was in 2018, at the end mm -hmm. of 2018, and it's a quite of three years now down the road. and. Um, I, I, in these three years, I, I managed to have a lot of collectors in my mm -hmm. um, database. A lot of them, for a lot of them, I don't have a mailing address. And yeah. I, it, was, it was very difficult for me now to go back and somehow contact them. I, I, I managed for most of them to get a, a mailing address to uh, send them a, a signed invitation. But it's really important when you have a collector um, on the spot, get as many details from them as you can. Tell them that, would you mind sharing me a, a mail address so I can invite, invite you next time I have an exhibition? And they will do that. Yeah, and, and, and gather that all along. Do that every day. Every time you get a piece of mail, look at that return address and, and, and build that list because that's gonna be golden for you in the long run. I guess, Another really important thing that can mess a lot of people up, you have to have a venue. Mm, and, yeah. and the venue, as, as Bogdan mentioned, if you have a collection of nine pieces and you end up with a giant venue, your work's going to look insignificant. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to make sure if you've got 20 pieces and it will only hold nine, well then you're going to have to cut down your, your collection and what you display because you don't want it to look over. But I mean, it could be, you can go to a minimalist Yes. sort of look but at the end of the day if you have 200 people coming to your show and you have only nine pieces on display it, it will look a little you know right look sad. Empty. yeah exactly <laughs> you don't want to look sad the the other thing is you know sometimes you have to book venues way in advance mm -hmm. and they can be incredibly expensive and i know some people say okay well i'll i'll do something inventive i'll go to a garage or i'll go to a to a, a storefront that's empty and just rent it for for a, a few days and the thing to remember there is you know do you have a bathroom are people going to be you know as soon as they have to go to the bathroom they're going to leave your yeah. reception mm -hmm. uh, do they feel is there a place to park is it safe there's this great uh, venue here in houston and you end up having to park across the street under the freeway and at night and it's a kind of down it's kind of a scary it's a, people don't go because they're a little afraid when yeah. they see the parking situation yeah, it, it was too, you got to consider those things and that has to be done well in advance of, of the show and in addition you have the venue now how do you uh, make these people welcome um, mm -hmm. you have to have a, some food so think of uh, a catering well there's actually you you've got to consider that you need a lot of help it's a solo show but you can't be doing everything because it takes you away from the people who are coming to the exhibition uh, to the reception so yeah catering is a consideration yeah if you have drinks you know and you want to separate somehow the food with a drink, so you, you'll have to have a bar bartender. Mm -hmm. um, either it's a professional bartender or the, a friend of yours, you have to have somebody there to uh, fill up the glasses. Uh, what else? A photographer. Don't even think that, oh, I'm going to use my phone and snap some pictures because you will forget. Mm -hmm. and, those, and you want to be in the pictures. <laughs> and those pictures are very important, not uh, right away. Mm -hmm. It will help, it will be very useful for your marketing campaign down the road yes. and uh, it's a it's a nice way to document to have some professionally done pictures uh, of your show and it's a good thing when you when you've got these artist friends who are going to come and support you give them some jobs ask them to to shoot some video on their phone and, and take some photographs get someone to to deal with the music so that there's there's something going on you know with the music mm -hmm. i want to uh, add here maybe it's not the right time but you have to have some music, so uh, break up that 
a monotony of of the the space and the and the awkwardness of quiet if people yes. stop talking and yeah. a lot when when you bring together this many people um, they may know don't know each other very well and that music will help um, the socializing mm -hmm. um, um, side of it and um, you can have a speaker with some low music uh, on the background yeah. or, or if you have a, a space that is large enough you can have somebody that can uh, do a live music basically or a DJ right. Right. Uh, yeah. but, but, make, on the space and the budget, but, yeah. but make sure uh, from my point of view that the music doesn't um, Cover, no, no, not cover, but uh, load or or take over the exit. Oh yeah, you don't want it to drown out. This is not a conversation, a, a place or, or dance. If you're going to give some sort of presentation, you need somebody to turn it down while you're giving the presentation. The other thing to consider is again, do you need security? Uh, if if you are in a place where people are not going to feel safe, I mean, there was a, a great place, uh, a museum in Houston, where they would have evening events and. Pretty much guaranteed if you parked there, someone would vandalize your car. So they had to hire a guard to watch your car every month at their meeting. Um, it, and, it, and it worked because I felt safe then. Somebody was watching. I know that um, we have a list here with things to remember. Uh, one thing that is not on the list and is very important mm -hmm. uh, to me is to have a sound system with a microphone. Yeah. You, We've been through many exhibitions and uh, nobody talks. You don't know when when the um, opening reception actually yeah. starts. Uh, it's an awkward moment. Everybody is waiting for uh, the artist to say hello, goodbye, thank you for being here. Uh, you know, a few words about the exhibition. I, 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 it doesn't need to be that much. It's just a welcome to everybody to mark the moment. Yes. Uh, it is very important that you have a speaker with a microphone. Those are, uh, you can find them at Guitar Center next to nothing. Just buy a system mm -hmm. that you're always gonna have under your table and use it whenever you can. Because I think, I think people also don't, don't realize generally that if you're in a room with 25, 30 people and you start talking, you think everyone can hear you? They they probably can't. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's particularly if there's background noise or, or people scuffling around uh, and the acoustics of the room, it really if you want to capture their attention and of course you do, uh, consider getting a, a yeah. sound system. It's, it's, it's very inexpensive and it's very important. And and you know once you uh, stop uh, saying your words, you can let everybody wander around and they all they have that great feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, it gives them direction on how the event is going and what, what happens next. Um, now, um, next is um, catalog flyers, uh, something about your yeah. exhibition. Printed stuff that takes a long time to get and, printed. And, and this, is, this is my point. Um, create in addition of flyers and something that tells about your exhibition, have a presentation with several pages, like a zine, with all your or a catalog, yeah. all your pieces in the exhibition. Make it free and available for everyone to take home, because not any, everyone will have the the um, possibility to buy a piece of art from that you night. that yeah. night. Yeah. But they, a lot of them would like to leave with something. And, and, and uh, printed invitations are important, uh, whether you hand them out, whether you mail them out or both. Uh, but also the idea, if you can create a catalog, you create a permanent memory. Mm -hmm. If you know, check your own files. If you get a little booklet for a wedding or something like that, you keep it forever. That's just what we do. It's, mm -hmm. you, you, val you value the fact that somebody took the time and effort. Now that can cost money and so you may or may not be able to afford it. But you could also do that very inexpensively and make it look real kind of guerrilla and, and ghetto and, and do, do just on photocopiers and things. But if you give them some sort of nice presentation of this show, that helps with marketing beforehand when you're trying to pre-sell as well as giving somebody a memento to walk away with to remember. Uh, but you also have to think 
as I mentioned, the, the uh, invitations? Do you need to create any signage? Do you need to order vinyl to put up on the wall, your name and the name of the show, whatever? Uh, all of that has to be planned in advance. And, uh, and little things like, do you have red dots? Because you're going to make sales. You got to have some red dots. Do you have uh, business cards for people or some way for them to get in touch with you? Do you have a sign-in book so you can gather not only a list of who came that evening, but get more emails and addresses and things for, for your mailing list for the future? Did you talk about uh, the, the presentation? Let's go back oh, a second. Yeah. Um, it's easier with painting on a mixed media because you can get creative on how you hang those things. Mm -hmm. With photography, however, uh, from my experience, uh, nobody buys photography if he's not framed <laughs> and ready to go. Yeah, I find that uh, too. And uh, if you are in the photography field and um, your pieces need frames or, uh, or a system to hang on the wall, uh, you're gonna have to think of that because just selling a piece of paper um, is gonna be very tough on people. It, first of all, it's very hard to take home. Uh, it needs a special preparation and boxing. And then um, once you go home, they're gonna have to find the frame shop and they, um, it's, it's hard. So if you can frame them, that would be fantastic and that would be my recommendation. Right, and you don't want to have like a bin where people go through. You don't want this to look like uh, an art fair booth. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an exhibition, it's a show, a reception for a show. It's not just a, a shop that they're going to. Um, you I, also I, have, to, you have to really consider Make sure you have photos of your art beforehand. I know people who have sold things and then realized they never took a picture of their art. Uh, so you should be doing that for all your art anyway and organizing it. But make sure you've done that. I have seen that many, many times. And then people are like, I have absolutely no record that they made that piece of art. And I, I, have, uh, I have even now artists saying, you know, would you be available to come with me and the such and such collector because I never had a picture of that. Right, right. And, and not only do they want a photo of the person who's buying it, they want a, a professional photo of the piece of art that is now behind glass. Uh, which makes it much more difficult to photograph. Just a, a little tip. Uh, and also you need to work out your pricing. You need to yeah. be, I, I, don't, I don't think you need to be really, I, I go by a square inch. I don't think you have to do that. But I think you have to be clear about your pricing and be able to explain it. Uh, because people, hopefully you're charging a lot and you need to be able to explain that to people. And, I mean, and you, need, you need to have that all organized. Uh, and it's very important that however you price your artwork, if you sell some, that would be fantastic, but it has to cover some of the expenses you put in this show. Yes. Because, you know, even, even, even if you find a great deals, by the end of the day, it's going to be a huge expense. And yeah. uh, I, I don't want to, this costs us a lot of money and we are working with budgets here and it's still, was a little overwhelming. Yeah, you can certainly do it cheaper than we're doing, but uh, uh, it, it is going to be a significant expense and you, you, your pricing needs to offset that. And it's, it's really important for me. Uh, you know, my, my photographs this time are very large, uh, in a very uh, thick uh, framing, yeah, kind and of they are like very that. heavy. Mm -hmm. Guys, they have to be professionally uh, frame. If you are not in the business of making frames or if you are not good on making frames but you do consider to make large frames by yourself, you have to consider uh, beside the, the, the look of it, the safetyness because mm -hmm. it happened to me in the past oh, um, yeah. and it was from a professional uh, framer. framer. The, the picture failed on the on the floor, so it's really important to have it safe. Yeah, it has to be done well. Uh, excellent, so, I mean, all of this is just planning stage, right? The getting ready for the show. <music> then you've got to actually invite people, and we were talking about the importance of your list magnificently important and we we feel that 
there's a, a real benefit in physically mailing some invitations. Now, not for everybody. You don't, you're not going to have everybody's uh, home address anyway, or business address. But I think there is a, there's a certain group of people who will really appreciate getting a, a printed mm -hmm. envelope with a uh, I mean, a, a, a handwritten envelope with an invitation in the mail with some sort of personal note. It doesn't have to be really personal. I think you just put a general message. But I mean, if you want to be it's personal, a nice touch, if you, you know? can be you, personal, even better. I, mean, uh, I, I think that's a nice touch. And it might be a generational thing, because I know in my generation, that means a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it means less for others. But uh, consider I, I, that you might need to mail stuff. I find it cute. I'm not into the mailing business. Uh, but I find it very cute and uh, I can tell you that if I get an, an envelope in the mail that is hand addressed I will open it now I throw most of my junk mail away with unopened but if if I see a handwritten note I will always open that envelope so it's something to consider you need at the get uh, at the very beginning getting ready you have to have a synopsis of your a story you about your lecture yeah. you because that's going to help you create a web page that's going to help you create a press kit that's going to help you print brochures flyers because you take from you take uh, ideas from the synopsis and uh, you know accommodate each one of those um, marketing tools but it's not a bad idea to do a press release. You might say, okay, that's an overkill. Who's going to show up? You never know. Yeah. Uh, reporters are always looking for events, particularly local ones uh, and um, kind of feel-good stories. You never know. Particularly, again, if you have a story for your, for your exhibition, that story might interest mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a reporter. In this case, the Bogdan is doing this one. It has kind of an, kind of an environmental theme, uh, and that in itself might interest people uh, in the press. So it'd be always always a great idea if you can get press at your event. Uh, there are also free things. There's the community calendars, and I, I put in every community calendar I can find. And again, those are going to require that I have some images to. Uh, uh, to include, mm -hmm. it's going to require that little paragraph Bogdan was just talking about. You have to say something as well as information about the event. So don't forget, there's a lot of free stuff out there as well, including social media. You and it works. People use, show up. Yeah, and, and uh, create an uh, event on uh, whatever platform you use, uh, and, and you know make it public for whomever to in your area to see it. Um, I, had oh, yeah, yeah. A, I had a, I, mm -hmm. I had a lot of. Uh, strange people, you know, just browsing events near me, and they, they show strange. up. They were strangers. Strangers, and uh, they show up at the exhibition, and that was lovely. And um, and so obviously you're gonna you're gonna flood your social media with it. You're gonna send out probably a newsletter uh, telling people of the event. Uh, and another thing is with social media, you can, um, and even with with written invitation, you know, you can put not a not there. You know, bring a friend with you. Yeah. And, and please, guys, help me spread out the world on social media and remember to, uh, you know, bring a friend with you all the time because you never know. I was talking to Valentina Atkinson, who, who runs a gallery, a, a, a Serrano Gallery here in Houston. And I asked her, how many people, if I want 100 people at the show, how many people do I need to invite? And she said 400 to get 100. Mm -hmm. So consider that when you're looking at how many people you want and how many people you're going to have to get in contact with uh, to get them there. Uh, so another thing that I found it important is, okay, you have flyers, you have all kinds of marketing materials printed. I think it's very important that you have a piece of print somewhere in the exhibition space that tells that the story. Yeah. A lot of people go around and they like to read. Yeah. So if you create a big piece, easy readable, about what that exhibition is all about, it's very, very helpful. Yeah, the, the story sells the art. 
because you won't gonna be able in that line to really talk with everybody. Yeah, and you don't wanna sound like a parrot where you're just kind of repeating the same thing over and over and people start rolling their eyes. And it's, it, it, beside of that point, you prepare mm -hmm. your viewers about what that is. Right. It's not like fishing for, what is it that? Why did what you put this that? Here? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. this is the story. Uh, and they will all read it. It's easy, readable, short, and y you make the connection in their brains right away. Exactly, and it and it really cuts through a lot of that and lets them appreciate the exhibition more. So I, I think, you know, you, you've gotten yourself organized, you've gotten all that done, you've gotten people invited, and now you're ready for the event itself. And that is the fun part and the terrifying part, is that event. I mean, you might have an exhibition that lasts a longer period of time, but we're talking about the reception, the actual kickoff or the reception for the event, that opening. And, and what, what makes it very stressful is not the event. If you, if you haven't had one before, then it's very stressful. If you have some history, um, it is not it that. It does get easier. What, what, is, what is stressful is that you need to make uh, some sort of a sale so that it covers the expenses of this uh, event, which is very, very important. So on the day of the event, you, you need to think of certain things. You need to think, in my opinion, paramount is what is the experience of the person who's coming? What are they going to encounter? How are they going to maneuver themselves to get there and, and enjoy the evening? So you've got to consider where are they going to park? Do they know where to park? Once they park the car, and you might, uh, I know uh, John Ross Palmer lives in a place where there's no parking, so he has to provide valet parking, uh, which is another expense for him, but it, it it makes it clear when I get there, this is how I get inside. Get a parking, how do I get inside the building? Is there signage necessary? Is there multiple doors? How do I get there? Get me there. And then once I'm in, uh, I need to be greeted by someone. I need some direction as to here's, here's the, uh, the venue, here are the refreshments. And I believe you need, that's one of the helpers you need, is somebody to direct people toward the artist mm -hmm. because they're there to see Bogdan on Bogdan's night. And somebody has to kind of make sure people are getting to Bogdan. That's part of the sell. I think there's two things that sell art, a story and the artist. And if you can give them both. It's very important that you have somebody that is watching you the artist mm -hmm. um, you can oh, yeah. you can end up with uh, various people that um, this is their personality mm -hmm. they will occupy your night take with, over. they will take over so you can't spend your night with just two people somebody will have to call you to one of the groups and save you from those uh, uh, who, who are tending to chat too much with you. Right, right. People, people, one of the things they're, the reason, one of the reasons they came is to meet the artist. So if you've got some, one of your helpers is watching you and saving you from people who are dominating your time, mm -hmm. that would be magic. I mean, it happens. It's, there's nothing uh, to do with that. There's, you know, uh, personalities and personalities. And, uh, but you have to, to watch uh, and, and plan for that as well. You know, and, and you also want to make sure that if you've got VIPs showing up, that you're giving them attention. Uh, one of the things that I've heard uh, mentioned before uh, and, and suggested is to have a VIP event beforehand, to have a special event for the press and for VIPs. People love that. They love to think that they're a VIP. And you'll often get a lot of gallery owners and things that will come to a VIP event who really won't show up for a general event. Uh, and that's a time when you could 
do a lot of pre-selling as well. Uh, so consider doing that ahead of time or uh, somehow acknowledging them when they get there. Make sure you're saying hello to all the important folks. Uh, now, you have sold something. Yeah, you made a sale. You can't just take that piece of art off the wall that night, unless it's only one night. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you have it like me, like for a month, you know, ask uh, the collector to, to uh, wait on that piece at least two weeks so that you, you, you can your show. disassemble yeah. your show before the end date. Mm -hmm. um, it looks terrible and uh, uh, most collectors would be, you know, proud to have it for view for the entire time. Right, right. And, and, and what we often do, particularly when it's a longer period, we will put a red dot and then change the label to in the collection of and put the person's name or in a private collection uh, and leave the la make the label uh, kind of give them a plug as well if that's what they want. Uh, but uh, you're gonna have to have someone to do your sales. You should not leave your party to go and do a, a Venmo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. and make sure the person that does that uh, gets all the information from this collector, address, how do they want the art delivery, mm -hmm. mail or uh, door or... Yeah, whatever. make sure you have their address. If they're not going to pick it up that night, how are you going to get it to them? Uh, but uh, yeah, so make sure that you've got someone there to help and make sure that you've decided how you're going to deal with that. I mean, are you going to do Square? Are you going to take credit cards? Are you going to do Venmo? Are you going to do cash only? Whatever system you're setting up needs to be set up. And, and if you're scratching your head while they're waiting, well, that's a really bad look. You need to have that set up ahead of time. Uh, and then, you know, you have to decorate the room. You have to make sure that it's clean. Uh, I went to one big event and it was real trendy and big. And, and But when you went to grab hold of the stairway, uh, the rail for the stairs, it was completely covered with dirt and your hands got dirty and people were going, ew, ew, yeah, that that's was not the experience. You know, take a minute to look at, look the place enough. over. <laughs> take a look at that before, before people get there. And I think a really important, and Bogdan alluded to this earlier, you're going to have to give some sort of presentation. You need to give a speech of some sort. It doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be long. Just just a welcome, what the exhibition is all about, invite everybody, tell, remind everybody that everything is for uh, and to be collected, because it's yeah. important, Th those pieces are for sale. You organize an exhibition because you want to sell. This is my latest product and I'm proud of it and uh, it's important. So after the show, you've, you've had a lovely evening, you've hopefully sold everything. Uh, and uh, everybody has left. You're probably going to need somebody there to help you to clean up, uh, to make sure that you've got garbage bags and things like that. Uh, clean up the venue because you might be held responsible. Then after the show, you need to start thanking people, mm -hmm. whether that's written, uh, handwritten thank you notes or emails or both. Uh, but you have to acknowledge that. In your newsletter, be sure to post pictures of the event, post pictures of the, particularly if you have VIPs, people who are buying, uh, capture those images because you can use it later in your, your uh, marketing. But the most important thing is what? The, I think the most important thing is have some fun. This is a lot of planning, it's a lot of work, it's expense. You've pulled together some people to help you. You've got the, your favorite people, people you've not met, important people, but have some fun. You've made all this planning so you can relax a little bit on that evening, have a drink, visit with people, laugh, make them feel welcome and enjoy the evening. If you're, if you're looking stressed or if you're exhausted from the process, that's going to detract from the experience that your, your customers have. Um, so, in that. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, we're throwing at you, but it is a lot, a lot of fun to do one of these shows. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's more fun when it's over. <laughs> but guys, this is what I wanted to share with you on this edition of um, Art Life. We wanted to... Uh, you know, uh, make, uh, give some ideas to uh, the artists that are watching our vlog and uh, looking for uh, 
organizing their exhibitions as well as to those interested what goes into putting together uh, uh, this kind of exhibition. Absolutely. Good luck. Uh, invite us to your show. And other than that, have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye guys. Bye Thank now. you for watching.